Vanessa, you asked me to pick up a loaf of bread, so I I, I popped to the lo local supermarket and came back with a, some sliced white. And I have to say, I haven't felt quite as embarrassed since I went into a petrol station at age 13 and reached for the top shelf magazines. What's wrong with this? Come on, this is this is what the nation lives on. I mean, what what in this fairly extensive list of ingredients could possibly be bad for you? Okay, what have you got on there? Okay, fortified British wheat flour. That's not bad, British. Rapeseed yeah. oil, spirit vinegar, preservative, calcium, propionate, soya flour, emulsifiers, mono and diet. Digesterides. Diacetyl tartaric acid, esters of mono and acid, Yum. palm oil, mm, flour yeah. treatment agent, and ascorbic <laughs> acid. I mean, it sounds perfectly organic and healthy to me. I think the fact that you can't pronounce the ingredients is a good place to start. Is white bread evil to you? Sliced white? Not one slice. A lifetime, yes. So when you look at that piece of gump that you've got in your hand, it's completely, to me, devoid of any nutrients. So you're not just getting a, a quick hit to get high sugar levels. You're also starving your brain of the metabolites that it needs to function. The short version is, it, 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 is, it is bloody evil, in my opinion. Real bread is literally what I've got in front of me, Tim. It's flour. That's the flour here. That's whole grain flour. Salt. Here we go. I'm gonna put the salt in. Okay. Water. And this is my sourdough starter, which is just um, again flour and water with the microbes in. And that is all you need to make bread. Even before you introduce sourdough, you've got to start with the ingredients. And if you're in the supermarket, you're wandering around, you think, yeah, what do I buy? You go for the whole grain. But there's a little tricksy thing that they do. They make bread look brown, even if it doesn't necessarily have the whole grain in. What are the other tricks that you should look out for in supermarkets when it comes to, to bread? You have to look out for the ones that have got no label on at all. So if you go to the counter and you see all these breads laid out, and you think, oh, fresh bread, it might not be fresh at all. It could have been frozen for two years and then reheated in the oven. So don't assume that it's been baked on the premises. It's often reheated. Don't assume because something is called a country loaf. It's no doubt been made in a fast, um, furious um, factory where it's taken you know, an hour to turn the flour into a loaf. And that's given no time whatsoever for the gluten to degrade and for that lovely fermentation. So you need to look out for that and you also need to look out for what we call fake sourdough. How, yeah. do, you spot, how do you spot it's fake? You have to pick up, look at the label, look for the words long slow fermentation and you also just look for very simple ingredients like the ones I've used here, flour, salt, water, that's it. When you start getting other ingredients, start being suspicious. Thankfully, there are some really forward-thinking manufacturers who are actually now creating real sourdough in supermarkets. But I'm going to say the word very carefully here. This does not mean that it's comparable to the handmade loaf that you would find made by an artisan baker or where you can talk to the baker and look him in the eye and say show, show me your starter and have a conversation that is your absolute gold standard so if i get this right white bread dyed yes. brown bread normal sliced brown bread yes like whole whole grain seeded and then and then above that, you've got supermarket sourdough. And then yeah. for you at the king, like the kind of, the ultimate loaf is a proper handmade sourdough. As I've been making and ch chatting with you here. And this is because it's just that much better for the gut. There is very strong evidence to say that a combination of lifestyle factors, including white bread and lower gut microbial diversity, 
is associated with most of the what they call non-communicable diseases so diabetes obesity rheumatoid arthritis neurodegenerative diseases um, so there is definitely uh, a lot of work that we need to do because i think that given the number of calories it's probably the most important decision of the day that you can make what bread that you eat on a daily basis is probably a defining factor of your long-term health. I mean, sourdough has been all the rage for some time, but I would never even think about making my own. You, you, you'll talk me through just how easy it, it can be. Well, you've watched me just chit chatting with you right now, making uh, a loaf just like this. And when I've been timed to make this loaf, I mean, I can actually make it in about two and a half minutes flat if I'm not ranting about what good bread is. Um, <laughs> so it's flour, salt, and water uh, with a, a starter that's been refreshed. So you can see it's live and it's bubbly and it's like. Oh, it's climbed halfway up the pot since I refreshed it this morning. Mix it up, put it in the tin. That's it. So I will leave that on the side and tomorrow morning I'll put it in the oven in the morning. So the only thing which, I mean, I can, I can clearly, I can get the, the flour, the salt, I believe water. Um, it's that starter thing. And that, I guess that's the kind of live culture. <laughs> Well, I, I, I just don't know where to get that. Uh, show me your hands. There you are. It's on your hands. Right now. You have the microbes that live in your starter here. And breathe in. Take a deep breath. You're breathing in. And I can absolutely guarantee you that the yeast and the air that you're breathing in. So all you need to do is capture it. Do you, do you want me to, If I can, I can actually show you how to capture it, okay? Do you like me to, I, I have to go and run and get some more water. Should I get some more water? Well, I mean, you're telling me I'm making bread off my hand bacteria. I, I'll show you, it's dead easy. Hang on, stay there. I've gone mad. Okay, fresh flour. You can buy it from the supermarket, okay? Okay. Water. Finger. Right. I mean, That's you have, it. this is a this is a non-washed finger. And we're off. That's it. That's it. You leave that now, and in there now there's flour, which is food. There's enzymes in there, which are going to break down the starch, and the microbes that are naturally present in the flour, and water, which is triggering the enzymes. And the bacteria that is in the air are basically Fat Boy Slim having a party in there and now, right now, you know, right back now, funk saw brother, and they're like, woohoo, boys, we're off. And they're already going. Double every 20 minutes. A party with your finger bacteria. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so you've you've jiggled the, the flour and the water around. You leave that for what, 20 minutes? No, well, I'll leave that till tomorrow morning. Right. So you leave that, and that's, and that's a starter culture. Yep, and then basically, I take half out. So I take, literally, go back in, take half of it out, and then replace what I took out. So if I take out 50 grams out of here, or 100 grams, then that would be half flour, half water. So I put 50 grams of flour with 50 grams of water back in and stir. And I can promise you, you do it morning and night, morning and night, until your starter basically is doubling in size. And you can do that. And if you, you wouldn't sit and watch it because it would take about four or five hours, but you mix it and it'll just go whoop in the jar and it'll be up and it will have doubled. And if it doubles in four or five hours, it's ready to use. And at that point, you are ready to make bread, but you're also ready to move on to what we call a maintenance lifestyle where you can double refresh it, so that means feed it twice, 
And then you need to put it in the fridge because if not, you've got a Tamagotchi on your hands and you'll be like sick of baking sourdough in a week. And if you, and if you can't be asked, can you just buy it somewhere? If you can't be asked, go and find a really sexy, tattooed, bearded, hipster baker and buy your bread off there.